We sometimes hear a talking point made by some lesser informed skeptics that there is no person in the Bible that has been verified by secular history. In this video, we are going to talk about every king of Egypt that is mentioned by name in the Bible on this episode of Ancient Egypt and the Bible. In this episode, we are going to do a brief biography of every Egyptian king whose name is mentioned in the Bible. Now, the way we are going to do this is in chronological order according to where the kings appear in Egyptian history. So this means we might be jumping around the Bible somewhat. Also, we are not only going to include direct references where the person is addressed by name, but we are also going to include place names that happen to include the name of an Egyptian king. Because some of these are really interesting and may even surprise you. And finally, we are going to exclude kings who are called by the anonymized title Pharaoh. An example of this is Abraham meeting Pharaoh in Genesis. Since the entire point of this video is to look at those kings who have their names somehow recorded in the biblical texts. So with all that laid out, let's get to the earliest Egyptian king mentioned in the Bible. King number one, Menes. Menes is one of those Egyptian kings that is mentioned through toponymic reference, that is by place name. And the particular place here is Memphis. Memphis is a place name that occurs several times in the Bible. Isaiah 19.13, Jeremiah 2.16, 44.1, 46, 46.14, Ezekiel 30.13, and Hosea 9.6. Memphis is named after King Menes, and is the Egyptian Meni Nefer. Menes is handsome. Menes was a king that lived during the Nagata III Dynasty I period, circa 3200 to 3000 BC. He is believed to be synonymous with either King Hor Aha or King Narmer although Egyptologists are divided as to his identity. Nevertheless, Egyptologists agree that he was one of the kings that unified Egypt and that he was buried at Umm el Kab in Abydos. King number two, Ramses II. This is another name that appears in the Bible because of a place name. It is mentioned several times in the Bible. For example, Exodus 1.11 states that the Israelites built the storage cities of Pithom and Ramses. The city of Ramses is recognized to be the city of P. Ramses and is located at Tel Kantir. It was established as the capital of Egypt by King Ramses II. The identification of P. Ramses with Ramses II was confirmed by Papyrus Anastasi III. Ramses II was the firstborn of Seti I. He was actually born a commoner, but became in line for the royal throne as a result of the accession of his grandfather, Ramses I. He came to the throne around 1288 BC and he is most famous for his stalemate with the Hittites during the Battle of Kadesh in his fifth regnal year. Ramses II had his last campaign into the Levant in his 18th regnal year. He signed a treaty with the Hittites in his 21st regnal year. And after this, we know little of what took place during the rest of his reign, with the exception of an exchange of treaty wives that took place in his 35th regnal year. Ramses II died after ruling 66 years 
and was buried in the Valley of the Kings, tomb KV-7. King number three, Merneptah. There are two place names in the Bible that are named after Merneptah. The first is Kadesh Barnea, Numbers 34.4, where Barnea is a corruption of Ba and Re, which is the throne name of Merneptah. The second reference is to the spring of Neptoa, Joshua 15.9, where Neptoa is a transliteration of Merneptah without the mare. Merneptah came to the throne around 1222 BC as the 13th in line to the throne for his father, Ramses II. He did a campaign into Canaan, particularly against Gezer, sometime in the first four years of his reign. Then he defeated a Libyan invasion in his fifth regnal year. He reigned 10 years, then was buried in the Valley of the Kings, tomb KV-8. King number four. Shoshank I. The next Egyptian king named in the Bible was Shoshank I, called Shishak in the Hebrew, 1 Kings 1140. He lived from 947 to 925 BC and was the first king of the Libyan 22nd dynasty. He was contemporary with Solomon. Rehoboam, and Jeroboam I. He did a campaign into Canaan during the fifth year of Rehoboam and the first year of Jeroboam I. Shoshank I recorded his campaign on the Bubastite portal at Karnak Temple. The itinerary shows that Shoshank I campaigned up the coastal plain and into the Judean foothills. He traveled south towards Jerusalem, but turned west before reaching Jerusalem itself. Shoshank I reigned 22 years. The location of his tomb is unknown. King number five, Usurkan IV. This king is mentioned as so in 2 Kings 17.4. Israelite king Hoshea, not wanting to submit to the Assyrian king Shalmaneser V, sent messengers to Orsorkon IV to render assistance. However, Orsorkon IV was in no position to offer assistance, and ultimately Hoshea's plotting was discovered by the Assyrians who ended up putting Hoshea in prison. Besides Hoshea, Osorkon IV was also contemporaneous with Ahaz and Hezekiah of the kingdom of Judah. By the end of his reign, Osorkon's influence dwindled to little more than being the de facto ruler of Tanis. Little is known about this king, except that he was the last king of the 22nd dynasty. His reign ended when Tanis was conquered by the Kushite 25th dynasty under King Pai. King number six, Taharka. Second Kings 19.9 and Isaiah 37.9 mention Terhaka, king of Kush, that is Sudan, who waged war against Syrian king Sennacherib during the reign of King Hezekiah of Judah. Taharka was the son of King Pi and cousin of and crown prince to Shabtiku of the Kushite 25th dynasty. He conducted campaigns into Levant and against Assyria. An issue here for many is that the biblical events are said to have taken place during 701 BC, whereas Taharka came to the throne in 690 BC. Therefore, the Bible is crediting 
to Harka as being king of Kush years before he actually became king. Now, the resolution to this issue is that Taharka, as the crown prince, is being credited with a future royal title. And we do this today as well. For example, we talk about Queen Elizabeth II serving as a mechanic during World War II, when in fact she was not queen during World War II, but came to the throne after the war. So we do the same thing crediting future monarchs with their title when we talk about their pre-accession deeds. In many ways, Taharka represented the height and fall of the Kushite dynasty. Under Taharka, Egypt experienced new prosperity and growth, but it also could not withstand the ferocity of the Assyrians. Taharka died in 664 BC in Thebes while fleeing an Assyrian invasion. His body was carried back to Meroe, Sudan, where it was interred in a pyramid complete with a mortuary temple. King number seven, Necho II. Necho II is mentioned in 1 Kings 23 and 2 Chronicles 35. He was the son of Samtek I and second ruler of the 26th dynasty that had been installed after the Assyrians drove the Kushite 25th dynasty out of Egypt. 50 years after the 26th dynasty had been installed, the Assyrians found themselves in trouble. They were under attack from a Babylonian and Mede coalition under the command of King Nabopolassar of Babylon. King Asher Ubal II of Assyria called upon his allies for assistance, and Necho II answered the call. Necho II took his army up through the Levant and to join the Assyrians in 609 BC. King Josiah of Judah attempted to prevent Necho II from reaching his allies in an attempt to influence the outcome of the battle. However, Josiah was wounded and died in the conflict. Necho made it up there to find the Assyrian forces disorganized and undisciplined. Necho II then returned to Egypt, but on the way, decided to pay the kingdom of Judah a little visit. He dethroned Josiah's successor, Jehoahaz, and put his own guy, Jehoiakim, on the throne. In 606, a second campaign was organized, and again, the Egyptians were called to aid the Assyrians. But this time, command of the Babylonian armies had been transferred to Crown Prince Nebuchadnezzar. And this time, it was a complete victory for the Babylonians. But the Egyptians managed to escape the rout with much of their army still intact. However, the Babylonians weren't done with Necho II. Nebuchadnezzar had to return to Babylon to secure his throne for a couple years following the death of his father, which took place at the same time as the Battle of Carchemish. But after his throne was secure, Nebuchadnezzar gathered his army and pressed into Egyptian territories all the way down to the Wadi al Arush, with the Babylonians on Necho II's doorstep. Any hopes for a new Egyptian kingdom were all but dashed. And Necho II was never able to mount a force that was able to drive out the Babylonians from their territories. Necho II reigned 15 years, and the location of his tomb is unknown. King number 8. Apres. Apres, as he is called in the Greek by Manetho, is also known as Hopra in the Bible, Jeremiah 44.30, and Ha'ibre in Egyptian. Apres lived from 589 to 570 BC 
and was the fourth king of Dynasty 26. The book of Jeremiah states that he would be given into the hand of his enemies, just as Zedekiah had been given over to Nebuchadnezzar. Little is known of Apri's reign, and no inscriptions of Apri's had been discovered until 2021, when a beautiful boundary stela of Apri's was discovered. The location of his tomb is also unknown. So, that covers the eight kings of Egypt that are mentioned by name in the Bible. I hope you found it interesting and learned something, and I will see you next time on Ancient Egypt and the Bible.